untold story, mental health and athletics. I'm Sam Rimmer, I'm 19 and I'm from Wokingham, Berkshire. So the contract I'm a part of with Bournemouth is a second claim because my first claim club is Bracknell. So that's where I'm from, that's where I started training. When I moved here for uni, I joined here as a second claim, which means they have me for um, most competitions, bar like a few leagues that Bracknell have me. So I'm sort of like split between two clubs. I'm Harry Crosby, I'm 18 years old and I live in Winchester. The club I'm with is Wadak Winchester Athletics and I train down here in Bournemouth. I hire claim for Bournemouth and I've previously been selected to compete for Great Britain Juniors for a long jump. I'm Adam Nicholas, I'm from Bournemouth and I'm 25 years old. Uh, I train with Tim Hughes' sprint group. We have a, obviously it's a sprint group with a like varying sort of ability and age range. We have anyone down from 18 up to 62. It's just sort of, it, we have the competitive side of it. We also have like a good social side of it. So it's sort of a bit you good mixture of both to keep you sort of interested. Uh, it took a while. Like it's something I think no one really wants to admit they want help for to begin with. I think it takes a little while, but I eventually just went to my GP in the end because it got to the point where I was like crying in the night for no reason. I couldn't really pinpoint. I can get up in the morning. So like it wasn't any reason. I didn't feel like I physically couldn't. I just mentally couldn't. Um, but I basically, I think I contacted a, G contacted a GP when I was like 18 or 19 and sort of, sort of that sort of route where like they sort of diagnosed me with like depression and anxiety and bits and pieces and sort of moving me through like like the steps of well-being and tablets and bits and pieces really, that's probably started then really. Uh, it must have been about 15, 16. I don't know, I think it was more like teenage angst sort of growing up. Uh, my career started when I was, I must have been 14. It was like year nine sports day. I did high jump. I did pretty good and I thought I was like, I thought I was, big. I thought I was really good at that and then I joined a club, had a go, realised I was awful. I was not very good at all and then it was, um, I started running, so I started doing a lot more hurdling and then from there on I just kept doing that until I was good enough to compete. Uh, probably when I was at school I started, sort of found out I was quite quick when I was in second, well primary school but then in secondary school we sort of developed it more because we got to race some more and I probably started here when I was 15, uh, it, so my year nine when I really joined the group and started actually sprinting like competitively but I really got into it through sprinting like against other schools. So my parents used to do athletics um, when they were kids and my dad recommended I try out athletics. I was balancing a fair few sports at the time. I started athletics when I was in year five and then from there I've just stuck at it, dropped the other sports. Uh, so to find support, um, I look to my teammates a lot of the time. You know, you spend a lot of time together and I've had some of the best, most therapeutic conversations just walking from like start to finish, like or finish to start. So I definitely look towards my friends for that. Uh, yeah, the club was definitely able to support me. It was um, mainly through my coaches. They're, um, they're, every coach I've ever had has been massively involved in my life. They've been really helpful, they've really helped me grow and they're always looking out for me. So it's definitely the coaches are my main source of contact. It's just the best support for me was actually getting out here and running because being part of, we have quite a good group like atmosphere and I think Tim really did a good job of supporting me because there'll be times down here I'll be sitting on the track just crying because I couldn't compute anymore but like you have, we have a really good group around us and everyone sort of works together to get people if you're not in the mental state, like you can come here and just release everything. Squad, the squad's like a little family, like you all kind of suffer together. And you, all, you know, there's a massive sense of camaraderie. So like every group I've ever been a part of, every squad, there's definitely been like great bonds that like happened really quickly. Like my old group, it was, um, uh, some of us were like year seven, some of us were um, like 27 and there was such a big age range but we all got along amazingly and it was such a great environment to sort of grow up in. Yeah, as a squad we're very open, uh, especially when we go from training into the gym, we'll just have a chat, talk about our injuries. Um, I'm quite open with my parents as well, talking about injuries and the mental side of stuff, how stuff's affecting me, um, what I'm trying to chase. For example, I'll tell my mum, my dietary needs so she can help me plan for them and stuff. Um, I started at like two sessions a week. Um, I then moved to, at my peak I was training six times a week and I've moved down to um, three sessions now that I'm at uni. So when I'm competing on the track I love it, um, training as well because athletics like I said is a big part of my life 
but other places where I'd like to go to relax might just be going out for dinner with my mates, down the wreck, places where I can just chill and there's no pressure. There's some days you just can't do it, but I feel like there's not many days where I can't come to the track and just run and lose my thoughts. But I do like to go, like, I, live in the, I live out in the country, so I can always go for a walk in the forest or I'll go me or my fiance down the beach, go for a walk or do something, just take my mind off it generally. I think it's a great advocate. It's not looked at as an advocate for mental health enough. I think, I think it's, a, it's become an excellent place for me to um, grow and help me. So I don't think the problem with athletics is necessary that it's, it needs to improve to help people with mental health. I think it just needs to be made, more people need to be aware of how, how helpful it can be. Because it is so good for your brain, just being able to like exhaust yourself, feel that sense of accomplishment and then like, improve slowly, but it's just improvement. It's really good for you. I think it's such an isolating sport. I think like some people do train on their own and obviously like sometimes it's not encouraged, like I wouldn't say it's encouraged, but like it's quite a lonesome sport. I think poor people need, need to be encouraged to like get good groups together and like train because obviously you have these people around you help pick you up when you're on your own. It is very isolating and obviously it's a sport where you can't really like blame anyone else. The results are purely you because like when you sprint, you're just running for yourself. You're not running for, like in a football team. You have that support. And when you're running on 100 meters on your own, you don't, have, you don't have like the mental support or like the physical support with you. I think for me personally, um, in athletics, it's probably the injury side of it, and it's quite an individual sport. So chasing times and distances can be quite hard when you don't reach them, especially. Um, getting in squads and when I was younger trying to get in squads and not getting the results can affect me. Like basically I think like my issue saying from just like I was just so stressed out and uptight about getting like sort of getting results and doing well and like I've taken a step back now and I don't really stress about anything because like stressing doesn't help the situation and I really think that's something I would have told myself as a like, younger like whatever you do like you're not going to change the situation by being like stressed out or anxious about it so I think that's something I would have said just sort of don't worry too much about it because it's not going to affect anything. I think I wouldn't be as harsh on myself trying to reach targets and with injuries etc because athletics is such a long-term sport which I've now realised that as long as I stay consistent at it for years and years to come then I'll get the results that I need so I just have to be patient with it. I'd probably start younger and don't take it so seriously. Because I think if I'd started younger, it would have been good for me, just being able to like get those few early years in and just improve a bit, a bit faster. But um, when I was 16, 17, I was I took it way too seriously. There was it took it got to the point where I wasn't enjoying it as much. It was more like I was treating it like a job. I'd come, put the work in, go home, rest, rinse, repeat, and it was like mentally that was exhausting. But I think the second I took a step back and started looking at it the way I used to and how much fun it can be. That definitely, that's definitely the most important bit is just having fun with it.